Hello everyone, I'm Swati and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to share my first ever experience in storytelling at the Hong Kong Stories held at the French Club. This story is my real life experience back in 2010 when I was shooting in Orissa. Storyteller Swati. I was shooting a TV commercial in the hinterlands of Orissa, an Indian state. We were a team of 13 people and amongst them, I was the only girl. Over the next few days, we shot in the most beautiful villages, we talked to the artisans and got a closer look at their naive way of life. Everything was going well, except sometimes I was looked at strangely by some man or someone would come close to me and try to touch me. I thought maybe it's the way I dressed or they have never encountered a foreign woman before. I had to be extremely cautious at all times. But that was not the only thing I was cautious about. During our shoots, we stayed at any place closer to the shoot location for the next day. At nights, alone in my room, I would be worried about precisely two things. One, from the creepy men that I encountered during the day, thinking that they might find a way into my room. And second, from the ghosts of my mind, which would remind me of all the horror films I've ever seen. I'm scared easy that way. At times like that, I always wish to have another girl's company. We were on our last stretch of the shoot that involved shooting with the tribal communities living far up in the mountains where there was no proper road or connectivity. We reached our last hotel closer to the tribal region, but in the middle of nowhere. We reached there in the night. While walking towards the hotel, I saw its facade and figured it's a very old building. We were checking in and I looked around. I saw no soul inside and how dark the hotel was. And on top of that, the manager gave me a creepy smile from the corner of his eyes, which I found a way too disgusting. <laughs> anyway, I took my keys and I checked. I was the only one given the room upstairs. I was walking up. I suddenly sensed a vibe behind me. I looked back in shock, like how you see in horror films, where a shadow runs. But actually, there was no one. That really scared me. After that, I kept looking behind and walking up. I reached my room, I locked it from inside, and I looked around. My heart raced. The windows were left ajar, looking into the miles of darkness. There were spiders and lizards playing hide and seek. But what shocked me the most was streaks on the walls of this dark red saliva spit out my previous guest chewing betel nut that reminded me of blood. I sat on my bed. I closed my eyes and then the light started flickering. I couldn't take it anymore. I decided to call Savio, the producer, to see if I can sleep in his room. I took out my phone in panic and guess what? My phone had no network. I decided to face my fears. Oh, no, no, no not to sleep in that room, but rather go down and ask Savio in person. My blood was chilled as I walked down. I actually literally ran. I reached Savio's room, and when I told him what happened, he laughed at me hysterically while calling for the extra bedding. I lied down and started recapping the entire thing that had just happened, and I suddenly heard Savio scream. I quickly switched on the light and when I asked him what happened, he said he felt somebody was choking him and he couldn't get up. Oh my my, what just happened? I am sure something is terribly wrong with this hotel, I thought. I eventually fell asleep somehow. The following morning we had to leave early, but then Savio got a call on his phone. His was the only phone which was working by the way because he had some particular network. After he got off his call, he said, it's better to leave me in the hotel for safety reasons as on that day it was Mahashivratri, an Indian festival where men can get really drunk and can create nuisance. While leaving at 5.30 a.m., Savio told me that they would be back by 8 a.m. max. 
As soon as he left, I locked the room from inside and sat upright, started judging and questioning everything inside. After a while, I could hear a kid was having a bath in another room. I was so relieved I wasn't the only one in the hotel. It was now 9 a.m. The team still hadn't returned. The kid continued to have his bath. The kid must really love his bath, I thought. But by this time, it was joined by another voice. A voice of a lady laughing in a weird manner. And then came a knock on the door. I thought my team had returned. But when I asked, no one answered. Maybe by mistake, I thought. Few more hours passed. The team was still nowhere to be seen. Are they okay? Are they still shooting? Have they met with an accident? Or worse, are they killed? Weird thoughts started churning in my mind. And now I could hear all sorts of sound. The wind blowing sound from the little corner, the kid bathing sound, the lady giggling sound, and then came another knock. And when I asked again, no one answered. It was now 1 p.m. I decided to escape. But how and where? I was in the middle of nowhere. My phone had no network and I had no money whatsoever. Outside, there are men like that manager who can't be trusted. And in this room, there are ghosts who would kill me in no time. <laughs> the kid is still having his bath and this lady giggling at what? I was beginning to resign to my fate. Something has happened to my team. I'm stuck. I'll die here. There is no escape. I decided to write a farewell letter to my family. Tears started rolling down. And now I could hear all sorts of sound. And they were growing only closer. There is no escape, I thought. And just in that moment, I hear another knock. I so wanted it to be my team. I so wanted to hear a familiar voice. I asked in my trembling voice who it is. And there came a voice. It's me, Savio. <sighs> I let out a sigh of relief. And as I opened the door, even though I was freaking out, I pretended things were fine. <laughs> we were checking out. The manager, again here, gave me a creepy smile. He then handed the bill to Savio, and the words he uttered here blew my mind. Sir, thanks for staying with us. You are our very first guest in many, many months. <laughs> what? I wanted to grab his collar. I wanted to ask him about the kid, about all that banging, about the lady laughter. But, 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 at the same time, I wanted to live happily ever after. <laughs> so I decided to keep my questions to myself and leave that place believing that there had been other guests. <laughs> happily ever after. That's going to be my new approach to life, I think. <laughs> Choose the reality you want, go with it. That is actually also the um, strategy of our next storyteller. 